Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Alan. I'm Alan. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, it's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Woo! Yes. You know, it's so nice to see these young gentlemen here today. Mm -hmm. Glad to have you here. Glad to have visitors here again this week. You know, it's, a, it's nice to see new faces. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. We have a lot of our regulars out this week with colds and some skin problems, and we don't know what all, but uh, we're just praying for them to be healed and, you know, to join us back. But uh, right now, I'd like to <coughs> draw your attention to up here on the screen. This coming Sunday, we have Bill and Kathy Ferguson with us from uh, Canada. They're missionaries to, uh, I guess they just got back from Africa. And they're going to be with us, uh, kind of to encourage us, you know, into missions and to, you know, discipleship. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, I think I think people just would be blessed beyond measure. Met them when we were at the conference in Montgomery last year, and it was just fantastic. Amen. Sweet couple. And you know, if there's any prayer requests that you have, you know, we'd be glad to pray with you. Yeah. And I want to point out during our worship time, we also do our tithes and offerings. Uh, the treasure, treasure chest is for our regular offerings and tithes, and our base is for our food pantry, which we're going to be uh, doing some more with that in the near future. And uh, I just think it's a, you know it's cool what God's doing. Uh, but right now, I'd like to just open our service in prayer and. As we're doing that, problems can come and lead us in worship. Mm -hmm. Dear Lord Jesus in heaven, Father, today I just ask that your hand be upon this service. Lord, that your words come out of Pastor Michael's mouth, Lord. Lord, that you guide and direct him in everything that he says. And Father, we just thank you for what you've done in Destiny Bible Church. And Lord, and for all our people, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Come. Anyway, we're going to come together and we're going to praise and worship the Lord. I can't wait. I love it. It's my favorite part. It's how I talk to the Lord. Singing. I sing talk to the Lord. <laughs> Sometimes I just make up words as I go along. So if you want to uh, stand with me and sing, you can. If you want to sit, you can sit. That's fine too. So. Mm -hmm. Tell you about my Jesus. That's what we're gonna do. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden way and heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Then healing, cause shame's done all its stealing, and you're desperate for some healing. Then let me tell you about my Jesus. Careful. He walks away where there ain't no way Rises up from an empty grave Ain't no sinner that he can't save Let me tell you about my Jesus His love is strong and His grace is free And the good news is I know that He Do for you what He's done for me Let me tell you about my Jesus Let my
Who would care that much about me? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Oh, he makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sin about it, he can save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the goodness is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Excuse me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let my Jesus change your life. Amen. Let Jesus, let Jesus change your life. Let him do it. It is so good. Yeah. No, 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 no. 
<laughs> we thank those people so much for singing with us. They did a good job, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, I sometimes need a little help there. God gives me confidence. I'm not a warrior. I'm not afraid to lose. I feel unqualified for what you call me to do. The Lord, with your strength, I've got no excuse.
promise that we have in Jesus Christ. Man. Let us exalt our King today.
because God loves us so very much.
It will. It will. But we've got a lot of work to do until then. Yes. Right. Amen. There's a lot of work to do for the king and his kingdom. A lot of advancing that needs to take place around the world. Mm -hmm. um, how many of you got relatives and loved ones that are not saved? Me. Amen. Amen. You want them saved, don't you? Yes. Yes. I, I, want, I want to get them saved before Jesus comes. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> so we want, to, we want to do our best. Jesus said that the end would come when this message of the kingdom of God was preached to all nations. Now he didn't say the end would come when the message of faith or the message of healing or the message of prosperity right. was preached. He said, when the message of the kingdom of God was preached, then the end would come. Right. That's, that's Jesus' words. Amen. Okay. Amen. He said, don't know, we don't know the time or the hour. That's for the Father to decide. So he'll decide when it's time for that to happen. But until then, we need to do what it says in Matthew chapter 28, which says, in the King James it says, Go ye therefore and preach the gospel. Right? right. The good right. news. So Jesus called the message of the kingdom the good news. But go preach the good news. And now, in the Greek it says, Not go, the, go ye therefore, but as you are going. So every day as you're going about your daily routine, go forth and teach and preach the message of Jesus Christ wherever opportunity arises. You know, some of you in here are no, three of you are nurses and, and there's sometimes you have a great opportunity to be able to share because people are in that place where they're like, oh, I need hope. Yeah. I just need hope. Yeah. And you have the ability to share the yeah. The ultimate hope for mankind, right? His name is Jesus. And then there's others of us who are round and about and doing things, and we love to look for opportunities <coughs> as well, no matter where we go, to share the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because we got a world out there that needs to know Jesus. Amen. <laughs> needs to know this, the, the kingdom of God. All right. Last night, um, Robin and I were, uh, we took a couple of days and went over to the campground and, and uh, we do that sometimes on the weekends and then we drive in on Sunday morning and uh, we're going to go drive back and pick up uh, the camper later, but we, we drove in this, this morning. But last night as I was there, um, I was just asking the Lord, you know, what to, what to speak on. And, I don't know if you've ever been in a position where you needed to to minister to a group of people or not, and you pray about it and everything, and then it's like you don't get anything. <laughs> and it's like, okay. But then throughout the night, the Lord uh, started, this, this, these couple of words kept going over in my mind. Mm -hmm. What if? What if? What if? And that's, that covers a lot of territory. What if? I want to go to Luke chapter 15. Look at the prodigal son, or what someone called the lost son. Yeah. Okay. Luke chapter 15. Turn me down there just a little bit more. Uh, echo. We're going to start with verse 11. And this is Jesus talking. And then he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. Now you notice that it says that he divided to them. Mm -hmm. There are two brothers. Okay. That's what here. An older brother and a younger brother. The younger brother wanted his portion. But the father divided to both the brothers, okay? He divided to them their portion. And not many days after, 
the younger son gathered all together and journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. That's kind of interesting that he he didn't wait long. He he got his funds, and uh, he was off. Yeah. He was going. Isn't that kind of interesting how that happens today? In 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 the world, somebody gets a little bit of money, and uh, you know the father here represents God in this story, and, and and they get a little bit of money, and they forget God. Oh yeah. They're out there doing their own thing in the world, and so that's what uh, this is representing. It's not many days. It doesn't take long. Now, I, I will stop here. I want to say that that you can have wealth. And still be a godly person. As long as wealth doesn't have you. When wealth grabs a hold of you, when money gets a hold of you, then it's really difficult to to uh, follow after the Lord. He's, the Lord says it this way. He said, you cannot serve God and man. Mm -hmm. He said, you will love one and hate the other. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we understand that uh, uh, someone can serve the Lord and be a wealthy person. But many, when money comes into their lives, they kind of go off and away yes. from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, verse 14, But when he had spent all, when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate. And no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have, spread, have bread enough and to, to spare, and I perish with hunger? And I will arise and go to my father. And will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Amazing. <clears throat> Many of us, I mean all of us probably, have lived our lives in, in, here and been points in times when we've walked away from the Lord. When we've yeah. not walked with the Lord. Um, very few have ever, from a little child, come up and always walked with the Lord and never done anything that they would regret. We've all done something, right? Amen. But the interesting thing is, is that the Father is always waiting for us. Right. He's always waiting for us to return. Now I want to bring in the what if part of this. Okay. What if? The young man had never left home, and he had stayed in the presence of the Father. Mm. What if he would have never lost his fortune, would he? His money, his monetary gain, he would have never lost that. He would have never had to have eaten with the pigs. Right. Okay. Actually, the pigs were eating, and he desired to eat, and there was nothing. What if he had served the Lord? What if he had served the Lord? He would not have had that lifestyle that would have made him feel so down and beaten down. Yeah. What if? But you know what? When we've done the what, we can ask what if all day long. And it'll never change what we did. Right. They'll never change where we were. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of the whole thing is that God, God Himself, mm -hmm. is standing there with open arms. We read the rest of the story. He's standing there with open arms saying, It doesn't matter what. He said, Just come back to me. And we will take from here and go forward. It's a beautiful story. What if? What if? I know myself personally. I have I have um, 
Well, that would be me, myself personally. <laughs> okay. I have done things in my life that I'm not, I'm not proud of. They, haunt, they come back to haunt me. I, one of the things that I tell these young people today, if I get an opportunity, and anybody that might be listening, please let your, your children know. You probably already have your children and your grandchildren. Let them know. Everything you do in life will revisit you. <laughs> it will come home. It, 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 it will come back and, and it will be there. Um, and it, it, things that you feel like that maybe you've taken care of, gotten rid of them in your life, but they come back up. And that's okay. That's okay because guess what? When you have come back to the Father, they're, they're taken care of. By the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, He forgives. Amen? He forgives all unrighteousness. And He wants to work with us, too, so that we fill our lives not with the thoughts of the past that we don't like, but He wants to fill our lives with the thoughts of the future that Amen. He has for us. Right. That's what He wants to do. Hallelujah. Jesus Asked Peter, and remember last week, last week we talked about the book of Mark, the first chapter. And Jesus asked the disciples, he said, who do men say that I am? Mm -hmm. And some said John the Baptist, mm -hmm. some Elijah, some one of the prophets. But then he asked a very important question to them. He said, who do you say that I am? That is the most important question that we can ever answer. Who do we say Jesus is? Who is he? Now remember Mark started off with his gospel. The first, he said, in the beginning, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, Son of God. Yes. Jesus is the Christ. He's the Son of God. He's the Messiah. He's the Anointed One. He's the Son of God. And that's exactly what Peter said to him. After all that time of walking with him, Peter came to the place and said, Thou art the Christ, yes. the Son of the living God. Amen. Amen. What a great revelation when that happens. You know how many in here have come to that understanding? He is the Christ. He's the Son of the living God. And it opened up your entire world, didn't it? Yeah. Opened up your heart for amazing things. And that's what Peter, oh, can you imagine? I mean, he's standing before the King of glory. And all of a sudden, he says, Peter, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. I mean, you, the moment that that took place, the revelation that Peter had, it had, it had to be amazing. Yeah. You said, wow. Yeah. Yes. Because Peter didn't, didn't just, you know, he, he didn't calculate that out. It was something that happened at the moment. And it was a discovery that took place. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living yes. God. Yeah. Beautiful. I remember when we come into that place. <laughs> the excitement, the enthusiasm, the joy, the peace. A lot of times we get in here and we're singing songs. And I'm reminded, of course, this is a much smaller uh, group than what I was in that day that it happened. But I was in a church in Salem, Oregon, up in the balcony, and they were singing praise and worship songs, and the songs. Songs were different back then than they are now. And, and you know, I love some of the songs now, but I love the songs back then because they sang about Jesus. They talked about his, him, him and just, it was great. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord said to me in that service, He said, This is what you have been looking for. And I had a revelation. It wasn't about church. I had gone to denominational churches before. I had gone to places where 
you know, I won't name the denominations and all, but I'd gone to those, and this was a this was a non-denominational church. You could find Jesus in a non in a denominational church. Don't get me wrong, we can do that. But what it was, what it, it wasn't about the church. It was about the Christ, mm, and that's what made the difference. It was about yes. Jesus, and it was like this is what you're looking for. Yes, you're looking for Jesus, and I found him. Oh, what joy filled my soul. How many, how many of you remember that day? Amen. Joy yes. filled my soul. Yes. yes. came to know Jesus as my Lord, as my Savior. Actually, He became my Savior first, right? Right. Yeah. And then He became my Lord. But see, I don't understand what Lord is all about now. You see, Lord means that He's our owner. He owns everything. So when I say Jesus, I say, Jesus, you're my Savior. I says, oh, all right, you're, I, I, I've been redeemed. I've been brought with a price. Amen? Amen. I'm not going to, going to, to uh, hell. I'm going to heaven because of Jesus. Right. But when I make him my Lord, when I receive him as my Lord, he's my Lord whether I make him that or not. you know that? Mm. He owns all things. So, but yeah. when I recognize that and we see that, He becomes Lord, and we realize that we don't live this life for ourselves anymore. That's right. We live it for Jesus. Amen. We live it for the King, yes. and all things begin to come into a totally different perspective. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah, it's amazing. Amazing what begins to happen. He said, Thou art the Christ. Thou art the Son of the living God. Oh, hallelujah. Beautiful. Wonderful. Mm. Absolutely marvelous. We'll get back to what if maybe in a minute. In Mark chapter 8, in verse 29 is where we had asked that question, but who do you say that I am? And Peter answered and said, you are the Christ. And then he strictly warned them that they should tell no one about him. And then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he spoke this word openly and then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when he had turned around and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Peter had just recognized Jesus as the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, the King. Now can I tell you, a king answers to no one except yeah. for himself. That's right. Now, Jesus and the Father are one, right? Right. Yeah. right? Jesus got his instruction from the Father. He's following the plan of the Father. So when Peter comes along and he starts telling Jesus, he said, you're not going to go to the cross. This suffering stuff's not going to happen. It's just not going to work this way. And, and uh, what was Peter doing? He was going against the plan of God. He was going against what the king said would happen. If the king has stated it, so be it. So be it. It is. That's the way. And Jesus said to him, He said, Peter, get, get he said, <coughs> Satan, get behind me, because he wasn't calling Peter Satan. He was saying, You got the spirit mm -hmm. of, of, of Satan here is what's going on. And and he says, You're trying to take this thing and make it about about worldly affairs, but this is about kingdom affairs. Amen. Okay? It's about kingdom affairs. 
Well, we'll read on and see. And when he had called the people to himself when, with his disciples also, he said to them, and watch this, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. Amen. Okay? Yes. So he's saying, who follow who? Him. him. Follow yeah. the Lord Jesus Christ. Follow the King. He says, what? Whoever desires to come after me. Whoever desires to be, can I paraphrase it in this way? Whoever desires to be of my kingdom, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Go to verse 38. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? That's what he's talking to Peter about. He's saying, he, and he's talking to the people in general as well here because he gathered them together as well as Peter and the other disciples. He said, what, what, what good would it do you to gain the whole world? Now what was Peter wanting to do? He was wanting to change the plan of God so that Jesus would not go to the cross. Jesus would not suffer. Peter didn't understand all this, but this was what he was doing. He, he didn't want him to go to the cross. He didn't want him to suffer. So he was changing the plan of God for the benefit of what? What he thought would have been the world. Right? That's what he was doing. So he was going against the plan. And so G Jesus says, what profit is there in that? What profit does it... What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Right. There's no profit no. at all. You can have every material possession in all the Ooh. world. Yes. You can own all the property in all the world. Right. But if you don't have Jesus, you have nothing. Because that will pass away when we pass away. But if we have Jesus, when we pass away, we have him eternally. Amen? Right. And we have the inheritance of the kingdom of God forever and ever. The eternal, oh glory to God, the eternal <laughs> king in his kingdom. Then he goes on to say in verse 38 here, For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father and his holy angels. Whoever is ashamed of me and my what? My words. My words. Jesus had just got through, he just finished speaking the words to Peter. His words. So what Jesus, what, what was happening here, if you study it out, really, Peter had lost um, connection with those words. He, he was not thinking along the same lines as what Jesus was thinking, and he was, there was no these words that you have spoken are, are not valuable to me. Okay. okay? That's what he was saying. So we need to make sure that we line up, our lives line up with the words of God, with his plan, not our plan. Our plans change, don't they? Yes. With every circumstance, with every situation, our plans change. Now here, I'm going to share with you this. Our plans change with other people's plans changing. That's right. mm -hmm. Everybody seems to have a, an effect on one another, right? And so we, we've got to think, well, this is the way it's going to work out. And then all of a sudden, something comes into the mix, right. and it's not there. Doesn't yeah. work out that way. Can I tell you, God's plans are eternal, right. and God's plans are firm, right. and His plan has never changed. His plan yeah. never yeah. will change. Right. You talk about 
genius of geniuses. <laughs> you talk about one who is able. God is able to take every person in all the world and, and with all the different personalities and the different wills and the character traits in there and work all that together and still bring his plan to completion. Yes. Wow. You talk about a manager. <laughs> I mean, he, it's awesome what he does. Yes. And if he can do that with the entire world, if he can do that with all the world, can he not do that with our lives? Yes. On an individual basis. Can he not do that? Hallelujah. So let's don't lose confidence in the Word of God. Let's don't lose confidence. Now remember Wednesday night, we had a study and we were talking about the soul of man. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world is his soul. All right. All right. Okay. Now soul is right in the middle between body and spirit. Right. Okay. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. That's the part of you, that's that inner self. Some would call it the subconscious. It's that inner being there. And, and that is where the battle is. Back and forth. There's a battle for the soul of man. Mm -hmm. If we want to not lose our soul, we need to follow after the teachings and the words of Jesus. Let's see if I can bring what if back into this. Okay. What if what if? What if Jesus had changed and said, Peter, I know you're right here. I know you're right. I don't need to suffer. I don't need to go through this. I don't need for any of this to happen, Peter. You're right. And what would have happened? Peter would I mean, Jesus, Jesus would have not gone to the cross. And the salvation of mankind would have been lost. Because he, made, he would have made a decision. What if? What if? But he didn't, did he? Thank you, Jesus. He went to the cross. Now, how can we bring that back around for us? God's got a plan for your life. Right. God's got a plan for your life, and His plan, He has, He has ultimate instruction for your life. He's got it written out. He's got it laid out. And here's the thing: just like Jesus went to the Father by the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, to find out the plan that the Father had for Him, we go and we figure out the plan that God has for us. He reveals that plan. Mm -hmm. So instead of the going away from it, what if we stick with it? Amen. What if we stick with it? How many people may, might we influence? How many people might we lead to Jesus? How much of an impact may we have in this world or might have in this world for the King of Kings? What if we do like Jesus and stay with the Father's plan. Because you see, all of us working together, we all work together for the same common goal. Yes. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. And it, here, here's how it happens. God works through us. God works through men and women to be able to bring his plan about. That's why he sent the Son of Man. He works through men. That's why after the resurrection, he sent the apostles out. He works through men. Amen? Amen. He works through us. So, guess what? What? Today you're getting a short sermon. <laughs> I'm not going
going to carry this any further out. Okay. Because I believe that's the question that the Lord wanted to, be, to ask today. What if? What if you just trust Him? Right. What if you just follow after His plan? What if? What if the prodigal son had followed after the plan of his father? Mm -hmm. He would have never lost all of that stuff. He would have never ended up in that situation he was right. in. But when he realized that, he came back and the father says, Come. Yes. <laughs> He didn't send him as a servant. He accepted him as a son. Amen. Right back into the family, and they carried on from that point. Amen. And that's where we are. Let us carry on from the point of God accepting us and walking with us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you so much for the presence of your spirit that's always with us. I thank you, Lord God, that you are looking over us every day. Lord, there are things that all of us have done in our lives and we're not, we're not uh, proud of. But we know that what we are proud of is that you forgave us of our sins and that you are in our lives and that you have a plan for us. And I pray right now today, Lord, that you will help us to be sensitive to your spirit. Help us to be sensitive to the presence of the Holy One of Heaven. That we may follow after your plan, O oh God. Yes. And that you may be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God bless you each and every one. I hope you have a wonderful day. In Jesus. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> awesome.